right, how do we set that oil differential valve right there? Let's get to it today. Just a quick one. We'll learn a thing or two about a thing or two. First up, what we're going to do is look up your models and serial number of your um, of your rack system, and uh, we're going to go from there. Alrighty, so I typed in the Hussman rack into the internet. I just typed in the you know part number, well the model number, with the word rack after it. Came up with this PDF here. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to look down here. And we're going to see right there is if we look down on refrigeration, is right here oiling system. Okay, 3.5 right there. So we're going to go 3.5. Take a look. All right, so here we are, 3.5 right there, and uh, we got our oiling system here. So as you can see, we're just going to if you breeze through that right there, you can see our oil pressure differentiating valve this valve reduces your oil pressure to 20 25 psi above the crankcase pressure okay so that's good to know and then if we go down here it actually has the steps on how to adjust our oil differential valve close all the float and service valves this is done by turning the valve clockwise until it bottoms out connect the low pressure gauge to the suction header Connect the low side hose of the gauge manifold to the Schrader connection at the end of the oil supply line. And you'll see all that. Connect the center hose to the gauge manifold to the suction header. Open the hand wheel on the gauge of the manifold for a few seconds and close it off again. Subtract the suction header pressure from the oil pressure. From the... And adjust if necessary and remove all gauges from the systems open up the float and service valve so I'll show you that right now so now you can see my gauges are hooked up right now so we actually have one side of the gauges hooked up to the suction and we have the other side hooked up all the way down here to the end of that oil system right there okay so what's going on here is we're going to come over here and we see that the refrigerant well the oil comes out of this system comes up through there through this oil filter right comes up to this valve now this valve so at this point the oil is discharge pressure so if this is 200 psi this is 200 psi. What happens is you have this pilot line that goes in your suction header over there. This valve bleeds off the extra pressure and releases a low pressure oil on the other side, which then goes into the compressors right there. All right? So we can see that right now, based on this suction group over here, this is reading Now the suction group is varying, but it seems to be reading around 15, 13 above the suction group. I'm going to have to turn this valve up. Alright, so just like the direction said right over here, you can see that all of these are closed right there. So every single oil float is closed off on the rack. We have our line hooked up to the end of this. All right, which is hooked up all the way to the discharge, no, suction side of our gauges, just so we can see. And then we can see the other side is hooked up to the rack pressure right here, okay? And so now what we're supposed to have, is we're supposed to have about 20 to 25 PSI above the rack pressure. And if we look at right here, this is 56, and we're at 70. So, it's about 10 right now. So that doesn't seem to be appropriate for what we need. We need closer to 20. I mean, I guess that's 13 now. I'm gonna give it a minute and see how it equalizes and take a look because this is still building up right now. It can only flow so fast. 
but I would say that that's not correct. It needs to be a bit higher. Now, typically speaking, you're going to actually have, in this rack, in what I've experienced, should actually have three oil differential valves. One for the medium temp suction group, one for the frozen food suction group, and one for the ice cream suction group. Typically speaking, that's what it does. But anyway, so what we're going to do is you're going to have to come over here, and I'm kind of running out of phone life, so it might have to be a bit of a quickie, and I might have to go and go back to retroactively change some things. But basically what you're going to do, just like the direction said, so it's 14. That's not good enough. We're going to have to come down here, pour that stem just like a TXV, and we're going to have to, I believe you actually open it up to increase the pressure. I'm hoping I can get a video of it. Let's see. So we're going to turn it left, open it up, one, two little turns, and we'll go take a look at what that did. So, oh. The suction pressure lowered and right now it's actually staying at 68 which is 20 so it did go up a little bit we'll see how it fluctuates with everything but basically we're going to play this game until we get about that 20 psi to 25 psi as a constant differential i got the direction wrong clockwise increases pressure counterclockwise lowers it so left lowers it right increases it all right so i hope that kind of makes sense i figured i'd post this it's not really the best because my phone died and everything but i figured you know i'll post it because i think there's enough to get you to setting the valve yourself so a couple tips that i did was if you actually like you know if you think about it right there's no way out of this you know liquid line right here right so Right, so there's no way out of that, not liquid line, oil line right there. So we have that low pressure oil line, we have the valve right there, right? And then we have our high pressure going into that valve, right? So there's no way out over there, right? So what you have to do, oh, I deleted it. Oh, well, what you have to do periodically is you actually have to open up your gauges. So what you need to do is, um, you know, your suction header will float. Okay, so it's going to go up and down, let's say, between 40 and 60. Okay, when it reaches 60, your oil pressure is going to be 80. And then when it goes down to 40, your oil pressure is still going to be 80. Okay, it's not going to magically just make that go away. So what you need to do is you actually need to open up your gauges. And you'll, and you'll see earlier where I'm connected to the oil line and then I'm connected to the suction header. You need to open that and flow that pressure into the suction header and then close your gauges again and then you can look and see okay well now it's at 40 and that oil pressure shoots up to 58 59 and then as everything you know as the compressor shut off and now the oil is starting to raise back up to 60 you're going to see okay now the pressure peaks at 78 or 80 or whatever and you're going to be able to do that but you can't you have to almost use that opening up the pressure and letting it flow into the suction header as a way to reset it so every time you know you, you adjust it a little bit you open it up you watch how it tracks with the suction pressure okay and i wish i could show that but i'm done with the job so i figure i could just talk about it i'm sure you guys can figure it out i'll actually post another video below about me troubleshooting a nightmare oil problem where i actually believe i do this on three different oil differential valves and I'll, I'll test that to low. This is a more below. This is a more streamlined, like just dealing with the oil differential valve. Anyway, uh, I hope you learned a thing or two about a thing or two. And that's how you do it. I hope you have a good one.